It wasn't long into reading Goodnight Poon Poon that I realized this was not the kind of series that I could or should review volume by volume. This was something that I needed to fully take in and experience as a complete work of art and not try to theorize or guess outcomes as I was reading. And honestly, I just threw all expectations out the window and I let this series into my heart and take me wherever it wanted to go. There are things that happen in this story, real hard hitting facts of life, and events that are displayed so genuinely and eerily close to home at certain moments. I want to review this series like I would any other, but to me the most beautiful and terrifying thing about art is that it can resonate with each and every person in a different way. One story read by 100 people is 100 different stories. So there are specific ways that Pon Pon resonated with me that really just tore into my soul and made me reflect on a large portion of my life. And it did it in ways that might not be the same for other people. But what is Goodnight Poon Poon? It is a story about a man's life, well, more so about a boy's life. We follow Poon Poon from when he is a child up until his mid-twenties, and are in his head for the majority of the story and are immersed into how he thinks and feels about everything. But his life circumstances, along with his low opinion and lack of drive within himself, cause him to go into a downward spiral into a very realistic and honest look at loneliness, depression, apathy, and even madness. There are other characters that we follow as well that all kind of interconnect, all living near each other and overlapping their lives just as you would in real life. Events that seem mundane but lead to bigger events that shape you into who you are to become. This along with the premonition of some big event to come near the end kind of reminded me of the movie Magnolia. It's a film that, like Pon Pon, is just about people, their lives and how they interconnect, and how we are all dealing with some kind of pain and darkness that needs to be released. With Goodnight Poon Poon, I feel like I do need to put a disclaimer in that if you are thinking about reading this series, I think you really need to come at it with a mature mindset. And not just that, but I don't know if Poon Poon would work in a way that it's meant to for someone that hasn't experienced at least a portion of the themes that it covers. What I mean is that there are very specific scenarios that are put into the story and characters are put into positions and act and react in a way that only somebody damaged or depressed or obsessed with something would act in those situations. Their actions might not make a lot of sense to some people, but to others they will be so goddamn relatable that it will make you burst into tears. And when you do hit those relatable parts, what is the purpose of it? It makes you reflect on your own life, and in many ways, Poon Poon is like holding a mirror up to your own inner self. It can work in one way like a cautionary tale, and in other ways like a replay of your own life. Like if you were to view your own life from an outsider perspective, how you would react to seeing those situations play out. But since you're now reading someone else experiencing it, you desperately turn the page hoping, please God no, don't do it knowing the outcome and yet it still happens and you are forced to re-experience it. Poon Poon the character is depicted in the manga mostly as a small white bird while everyone else minus a few other family members of Poon Poon are drawn in a very detailed realistic way and I mean very realistic. The artwork in this manga is phenomenal, and mostly it's only characters talking to each other. Very rarely are there any big dynamic poses and double page spreads, but it's more about the detail and focus of the realism, especially when it comes to the eyes of the characters. Though there is a lot of surrealism and kind of fantasy aspects inside characters' heads that are on display as well. But like I said, Poon Poon himself is just simply depicted as a small bird drawing. And look, I haven't looked up anything about this manga and the author's true intentions. I have only read it myself and I'm going off of my interpretations of what I read. But my interpretation of this is that originally the simplistic design of Poon Poon is meant to kind of represent the innocence of a child, that the future is wide open for him to develop into anything. He's a blank canvas. 
Also, since he has no defining features, it helps the reader better identify with him. We can put ourselves into his place since there's nothing signature that stands out about him. There's nothing to manipulate our thoughts into how we think about him other than what's going on inside of his own head. Watching Poon Poon grow up took me to some dark places in my own head. We first had the hopeful outlook of a child who thinks that he will grow up and explore outer space. And remember being a little kid? And when you would say something like that, it wasn't a joke. When you are that young, the possibilities are endless, and that excitement of an amazing explorative future is just overwhelming. But then you grow up. And whether you like it or not, the world is going to meet you and hit you harder than you ever thought possible. Most of the story focuses on Poon Poon's feelings and attachment to a girl named Aiko. They met as children and he immediately falls in what he thinks is love with her. Being a kid and a young teen and discovering feelings of love, lust, and sex is a very confusing time for anybody, but there is a type of person, one that feels no courage within themselves, that has no confidence, that doesn't think that far ahead and limits their own value, who will receive affection from another person and cling to it like their very life depends on it. And that validation becomes necessary, as necessary as food or water, and it soon becomes an obsession. It's like a drug, and when you take that drug away, you collapse within yourself. Depression, obsession, it's all the same. Poon Poon centers his self-worth around his attachment with Aiko, and he does this from a young age to the point where everyone else is growing up around him as he's focused on that one singular point. All the while, he's having urges that he doesn't understand, especially for sex. Wanting it so badly, because what is sex except the ultimate expression of being valued by somebody else? Somebody wants you inside of them to come together in bliss and melt away into one another? If somebody wants you in that way, then that must really mean something, right? It must mean that you're truly worth something. Or maybe I just looked into that portion of the story a little too deeply. Without spoiling, Poon Poon's sex life gets abruptly given to him, and he begins to want it more and more, and honestly it becomes a little bit scary. And there's a heartbreaking scene where he's on a date as a teenager, and he has no aspirations other than wanting sex at the end of it. And it's uncomfortable because you've watched him grow up from a small boy, and we know he's not a bad person. But he's so down, so low, so broken and desperate that he feels like this sexual connection would validate himself. And at the same time, this isn't who he wants to be with. Him and Aiko are separated at this point, and connecting with his feelings for her, he is able to write a story that actually captivates somebody else. He tapped into those feelings, but they are also so self-destructive that he hangs his entire life on the hope of meeting up with Aiko once more. There's yet another portion of the story where Poon Poon is a young adult working a job that he doesn't care for, going through the motions, and that small child that dreamed of space is all but beaten out of him at this point. And I haven't even gone into detail about his parents or his uncle or that he never exactly had the best home life or example to strive towards to begin with. There's a lot of factors that play into it and I've always been of the opinion that the things that happen within the first 10 to 12 years of your life really shape you into who you're going to become, though you don't realize it at that point, and it's not until you're older as an adult where you realize all the damage and trauma that it's done to you. And there's another moment in the story where he thinks he sees Aiko at the subway, and this drives him into the hope that maybe they will run into each other again someday and reconnect. And that sad hope makes him get an apartment where maybe they could live together that he could show her how far he's come with his job and small apartment and his achievement of nothing. Visions of her returning to him someday run through his mind, of them living together, cut together with images of Poon Poon's reality sitting alone in the dark, becoming more blank and more depressed, as the very essence of his life has mostly been centered around another person whom, at this point, he hasn't even seen in years. 
Look, there are ups and downs in Poon Poon's life. It isn't just constant misery, and the manga is honest enough to show us real life. And life is messy, and sometimes you're doing okay, and sometimes you're really not. And I haven't even gone into the darkest aspects of Poon Poon yet, and some of that is because I don't want to spoil anything. And also, it's so specific to the entire series that you have to experience it in that way. How traumatic events shape and twist Poon Poon into an almost unrecognizable entity, even to his own self, and it makes you look at your own life. You ever just feel like you're playing a character? Like everything you do and say is just an act and that the real you is buried so deep or maybe doesn't even exist at all? Or maybe like Poon Poon, you were obsessed with somebody else and you created radical fantasies about your life together while you could have been working on yourself and building yourself up. Instead, you couldn't even muster the slightest bit of courage after being broken. Or maybe that brokenness has turned into a sociopathic anger at other people and at the world around you. Fuck everybody and fuck everything, right? You keep to yourself and you don't make waves with anyone. Why should you be punished for being a good person? Or maybe you're just doing the bare minimum. There are forms of abuse all throughout Poon Poon, psychological, physical, and sexual, and there are also moments of homicide and suicidal tendencies. So if you are considering reading this, really, and I mean this seriously, take consideration of yourself first. If you are the least bit suicidal, Poon Poon will make you face those thoughts and feelings, and it's not going to hold back. Some people are not ready for that. And like I said earlier, without ever having been in that headspace, I don't know if someone would actually get it. They would read those chapters and think, oh yeah, that's pretty sad. But if you've been there, if you've thought about it, or in God I hope not, tried it, the final volume of this manga might destroy you or bring you back or trigger memories that you wish that you didn't have. And maybe I sound like I'm being too serious about all this because, I mean, it is just drawings and words on a piece of paper, right? But it's more than that. I don't know if I should go into what parts of Poon Poon resonated with me specifically. You probably have an idea from what I chose to focus on in this review, but my god, there were moments in this manga where I feel that were just ripped out of my past and put on display, and they're moments that I'm not proud of. I spent a large part of my life depressed and not working on myself being a bum and hoping that I would meet that one person again someday, just going through the motions and had no idea of my future, having nothing and thinking that death would probably be better, that if I disappeared from this world that nothing would change, and that there's a momentary shock when the person is gone, but then life goes on, and after some time, people don't even remember your face. Good night, Poon Poon showed me that there is a part of myself that still exists deep within me, that even though I have progressed, I can't deny the feelings that I once had. And who I was did shape me into who I am now, and they do feel like two different people. But there's still an attachment between them, like a string holding them together. Just like a young boy with his friends sees a shooting star filling his heart with joy, and a grown man lying on his back in the night bleeding out. They're completely different beings, and yet they are one. How does it happen? How do you go from point A to B? How does our childhood self disappear? And how do we begin to hate ourselves? It's hard to tell because often there is no singular point. It's just the road that we travel and whether or not we are willing to be able to accept the responsibility for one our own actions and accept the mistakes that we made in the past, as well as working and striving towards a better future. Will you use those things to grow, or will you sink deeper into despair? And this is a series that makes you question this, and smacks you in the face with the outcomes. Read Poon Poon at your own discretion, and above all else, please know that even if you don't see it within yourself, you do have value. But you have to be able to give that value to yourself. And not expect the world to comply, because the world is not good, and it's not evil either. It's indifferent. And it's up to you to decide what to do within that indifference. There are things that you can't control, but there are things that you can. And there are mistakes and confusions that you will have growing up, but as you get older, you can reflect on them. And if you are 
at a point in your life where you're strong enough to see those mistakes and realize that they can build you into a better person. I think that's kind of the overall gist of what I'm trying to say, that that darkness might still exist within you, but you can still move forward and struggle and survive day to day and move towards being a person that's evolved from all of that. I got a lot of things out of Goodnight Poon Poon, but ultimately I think it really just made me reflect a lot on my own life and uh, just life in general. At this point in the video, I'm going off the cuff. I've finished my script, but I just kind of feel like talking about it some more in that it really did affect me on a deep level. And I think it will affect a lot of people. But like I said earlier, if you have gone through experiences that are similar, and there are a lot of things I didn't talk about in the review. Like I said, there are things going on with Poon Poon's uncle and uh, infidelity and cheating and stuff like that. And perhaps you've experienced that aspect or Poon Poon's mother and, you know, going so far in life and feeling like she hated part of her own family or wanting to feel young again or uh, so many things that, that this manga covers. And it's honestly like astounding the amount that it truly does convey within its 147 chapters. It's a decent length manga, but it's not too long. And within that time, with between the artwork and the surrealism and the honesty and realism of what it shows you, there's just a lot to take in. And I think everybody that reads this will have a different experience at the end. So is it a manga I can recommend? I don't know. It really depends on you and how you interpret what you are reading and how you reflect on it between your own life and between the story of Poon Poon. So I, I, I wouldn't say go out and read it and I wouldn't say avoid it. I would say take it at your own discretion and figure it out for yourself. But just know it will reflect a lot of realism back at you. I don't really know how to end this review, so I'm just going to say thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate all the support I get on this channel. Thanks. I mean, if you want to like the video, if you want to subscribe, you can do all that. The normal ending spiel that you get in every YouTube video, um, you know, that's there. But thank you guys for watching this video. And uh, yeah, I think we all have a lot to think about.